Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I have a lot of big updates for y'all, not just the severe weather. Severe weather is bad enough. We do have a chance for hurricane winds. Once again, tornadoes, large hail. We still have flooding coming, and it is going on for a couple more days. Once again, we've been doing this every day for quite some time. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I always upload every day for my subscribers. Try and keep them as safe as possible. Usually not for tomorrow, for Saturday. That will be Sabbath. But from what I can see, one will also be warranted for tomorrow as well. But I will give you the latest updates, plus what's going on with the tropics. We have big changes coming very soon. And what's going on in our atmosphere, guys. We're about to feel impacts that we haven't felt for 20 years. So remember, I have links in the description on everything I'm about to show you. Let's get into the information. Now, we still have severe weather for today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Matter of fact, it's been upgraded to enhance for today. I will go through this in just a minute. There's some very important information I want to show you guys. Now, we still have all this dust that's going through our MDR, our Caribbean as well, and we do have two tropical waves. You can see them here on infrared. That is moving through. This is going towards the Lesser Antilles, and this one right here I'm showing is could be a big concern that we need to think about. From what I can see, it could be a big problem. Plus, this one right here is literally going to pass right through our Gulf of Mexico. But with these plumes of dust beef in front of it, behind it, it's still keeping it suppressed where it can't do anything. Now, I've never been here before. We have a ramped up hurricane season. That's because we have a weak high pressure in the Atlantic. That's putting less wind shear. Plus, all of our temperatures are above average because it's getting less shear as well. So above average temperatures is going to cause for ramping up on these storms sooner or later. I'm still showing later July and for August for sure. And you can still see here from your dust at your tropical wave moving through, you have all these plumes of dust in front of it and behind it. And it is going to walk it right through the Caribbean where the Euro is still showing up in our upper levels. It is still somewhat staying rotated and going through our Gulf of Mexico. But that next wave is the one to watch for. You can also see this on your GO satellites. You have the big plume pushing through this big pocket of precipitation, bringing some heavy rainfall to the Lesser Antilles, to the islands, to Puerto Rico as well. And as that moves towards our Gulf of Mexico, it's going to keep going west. But this next wave that we have going is going to start building up with a plume behind it. That's what's keeping it some probable issues. But this could go towards the southeast of the U.S. and it could go towards our Gulf of Mexico as well let me show you all the latest information now you can see here from my tropical pause way up in the atmosphere that we do have our severe weather ramping up all the way until sunday but you can also see that that tropical wave moving through the caribbean not on ground level it's not getting any pressure it's not going to form up any hurricane for anybody no worries on that but you can see here right here with the euro that at the upper levels it is still rotating it is still pushing into our gulf of mexico trying to form up so these Tropical waves are staying strong. Thank God we have this dust right now, and it is keeping all that suppressed. But it is trying to form up in our Gulf. But you also can see from here that our ocean temperatures are well above average. All this should be cooling down when you're in El Nino because all this shear coming up and stopping anything from forming. Big high pressure over here, but our high pressure is weak this year. And you can see from your sea surface temperatures that we have well above average temperatures, a lot of fuel for these tropical waves to grow. So with all them warm temperatures, it gives you a lot of tropical cyclone heat potential. So you can see all the heat potential where we have a lot of rise in air motion, and it is giving a big chance for something to form, especially as it gets towards the Western Caribbean. A lot of heat in our Caribbean and our MDR. Plus CSU, College State University has updated. They did do their research and increased forecasts now predict above average 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. So we do have more chances just with cyclone heat, with the weak high pressure, and all this rising hair from all the temperatures for something to form up in our hurricane season. Even though we have the dust right now, that is gonna stop towards the end of July. And you can see how fast they changed their forecast. So all the way from April is predicted to be below average and June is predicted to be near average. Now in July, above average. Now you can see with the latest cyclone locations according to Euro all the way to the 14th, that that first tropical wave is not gonna form into anything. It will be weak and just move into the West, but it did try, you did see it at the upper level heights. But with that next wave that was in between those two plumes of dust that it could get away and it could form up sometime around the 14th into the Caribbean, starting off with some weak, or it could go further to the north and be something strong, turn into a tropical storm and a hurricane 
right off the East Coast or it could go towards the Yucatan, go into the Gulf of Mexico and be something weak as well as that next tropical wave after that more than likely will head into the Atlantic, maybe towards Bermuda. We'll keep you updated. But so far we have two paths that a next tropical wave could go to. And you can see from the SpaghettiOs, it will either be something weak in the Gulf or it will be something strong going by the East Coast. Now, when you look at your latest update on your potential velocity anomaly, which lets you know when you have favorable or unfavorable environment, you can see as you go from the 11th all the way to the 13th of that first tropical wave, maybe in a neutral phase that's surrounded around all this unfavorable environment, it cannot form. Also, that next one by the 17th, according to the Euro, will stay in the neutral phase where it will not be able to form into anything. That's the latest update. It could be surrounded by all this unfavorable environment, all this dust. You can also see this with the latest on the GFS. They almost pretty much agree. GFS always roots for these storms. It shows that first tropical wave does have a chance to strengthen a little bit, but it's pushing west. So this will more likely go into the Pacific as well. There is something expected. But right here for the 17th, unfavorable environments surrounded around all this, putting that into the neutral phase, where that second tropical wave more than likely will not form. But we still need to keep our eye on that tropical wave because any slight changes and it can direct from further to the west, it can go further to the north. And if it goes further to the north, it gets away from this dust and it actually could do something. So we'll keep you updated on that. Now, when you look at the long range of the year, you can see as we go towards the end of July, we're going to start getting away from that dust, get out of the neutral phase, and we're going to start coming into a favorable environment, especially for August. Now, the one concerning factor is when you look at the Euro, which is a more accurate weather model, that is showing chances for just a tropical depression. You can see in 72 hours, all up to five days, that next wave, that first wave, is not doing anything. But as that second wave starts approaching towards the Lesser Antilles, it has a favorable chance to head to the northern pattern and become a potential tropical depression at least. But there is disagreement in the data and what the models are showing. Now remember, these are just model runs. The data, in my opinion, is more accurate, but just to show you everything, you can see with the Euro, that next tropical wave has a chance to start headed to the north, maybe try and become something, but then it gets pushed to the west. But keep in mind, this is at the end of the run, literally. So we'll keep you updated and see what forms out of this, because so far it's showing that it has a chance to form as far as a tropical depression according to the euro now you also can see this with the gfs that it has a chance to form it's still far away guys eight nine days away but it's also agreeing with the weather model of the euro that this will suddenly start to push to the west and go west and be possibly that weak system forming through and not be the strong hurricane going up the east coast this is literally too far to take as real good accuracy so we'll keep you updated on this it's just a little concerning because the euro has seen a chance for a tropical depression to form right around puerto rico in those days i will keep you updated but to stay as accurate as possible national hurricane center has nothing in the atlantic for the next seven days but in the eastern pacific there is two disturbances that is at 70 percent and 90 percent moving west northwest still showing this first one is no threat towards hawaii this second one could be and it is agreeing to both weather models. So that's a little concerning as well. So you can see with the Euro, the first tropical wave, not going to do anything. It will strengthen up with no effects to anyone. But that second one could start heading further to the west towards Hawaii as we go towards the middle of July. And GFS is agreeing as well. That first one will start dying off as that second one could start going towards Hawaii. Maybe get on a northern edge of it. That's still too far to take seriously. That's over 300 hours. But it is showing that it is starting to head west and it's trending with both models. So we'll keep you updated, everyone in Hawaii. If you don't know Levi Cowan, he's a meteorologist in Hawaii. I'm sure he'll keep you updated on this one as well. But there's some other things I want to talk to you about real quick. So let me update you on this as well. So we had a CME the other day and it is forecasted to impact us all the way until the 9th. Not being any strong impacts, but you can see right here. Now Earth is that yellow circle right there. And you see how it went towards Earth and it did a shear on it. It wasn't a direct hit. You can see right here, it wasn't a direct hit. It hit it on the side, so it's not going to be super strong. And if any of you are wondering what this is floating around back here, this is Mercury. But I did put these links in the description so y'all can check out for yourself. Now, so far on that one that we had a couple days ago, the solar activity is expected to be at low levels with a slight chance for M-class events through July 9th. 
And there is some ores that we're going to see out of this, plus other impacts. So far, for tonight and for tomorrow, you're going to best see it if you're in Alaska or if you're in Canada. But there is other impacts. So while the storms create beautiful auroras, they also can disrupt navigation systems such as global navigation satellite system and create harmful geomagnetic induced currents in the power grid and pipelines. But you can see here that now that sunspot is behind the western limb, so solar activity is expected to decline somewhat at quieter levels. That being said, a large sunspot is now turning into view from off the southeast limb. It remains to be seen if any other spots are accompanying it, but it did produce at least one minor sea flare during the past 12 hours. And this sunspot is so big, you can see it from Mars. A big sunspot. You can see a better picture of it here. I did post this on my community tab. A huge sunspot. So if we get any solar flares coming from that, if it does a direct hit, it could be bigger impacts. Plus update on these future impacts. I'm showing we have some prolonged impacts coming that you should prepare for any which way you can. We have the solar cycle 25 coming and it's predicted to be just as strong as what we had almost 20 years ago. And you can see a better shot of it here. It is stronger than the one we had 10 to 15 years ago. But once you go 20 years, that's about the same strength of what is expected out of this one. Now the solar maximum is coming between late 2023 and in the middle of 2024 with a peak total monthly sunspot numbers of 184 plus with 95% confidence. This means solar cycle 25 could be twice as strong as solar cycle 24 which peaked back in 2014. Now what this means, this means that the north pole and the south pole on the sun is going to shift. And this is going to make for long duration impacts. Not only is it going to put a lot of heat in our upper atmosphere, guys, helping out with more of that climate change where you're going to see a lot more ice melting. You're going to see longer ARs, atmospheric rivers coming, and a lot more flooding, including long-term periods of global cold, rainfall, drought, and other weather shifts may also be influenced by solar cycle activity. This is going to be a strong one, just like we had 20 years ago. And I will keep you updated on those stories because that's a pretty serious event that could bring a lot of problems. And it's not just for the U.S. This is global impacts, guys, on this cycle. Now, let me update you on our severe weather because it is getting more intense for today and tomorrow and Sunday. And you can see up here, once again, with your upper level tropopause, that this is coming in. We have a big trough coming on down, bringing us a lot of severe weather. It's all due to that cold front we had. And it is going to come down for Sunday as well bring in severe weather so there is going to be a lot of storms that is coming on the way and you see right here with the euro that that wave is making its way through the caribbean and moving through the gulf of mexico not forming any surface load not being a tropical storm not being anything because being suppressed by the dust but it is still moving around these waves are still trying to come at us so for today, y'all have more storms that is brewing up right across the upper Midwest and North Central. Also popcorns on the Southeast. That's where it's isolated nature here and there. Not really no big squall line or anything. And it will be some for the New England states. But as you go on later tonight, you're going to have some more storms popping up for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. Some strong storms. And it's going to overnight once again, bringing damage and wind gusts, hurricane force guys all morning long. Then as you go for tomorrow, this is going to pop up again as that moves through the Ohio Valley. you got more storms that's going to pop up for tomorrow and enhance your severe weather. You're going to have them all across the Ohio Valley, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, south, the mid-Atlantic. you got a lot of storms that's popping up for tomorrow. And it is going all the way until Sunday morning as well. Plus right here for the south central and the central plains, you got more storms popping up for tomorrow, bringing more severe weather and chances for more tornadoes and more large hail and possibly more damaging winds. So when you look at your update on your helicity vibes, which shows you strong updraft, chances for large hail, even chances for a strengthening cell potential tornado. You see as you go into five and six o'clock, you get a strong cell moving through eastern Kansas and you have some coming through Colorado. Once again, you'll have a few tornadoes yesterday. You could see some more tonight and overnight storms growing for Texas Panhandle, for Kansas and Colorado all morning long going towards Oklahoma. Then for tomorrow, this is going to burst right back up from Arkansas going towards Tennessee, maybe northern Mississippi. Also for Colorado and Wyoming going towards the Central Plains and the South Central, right towards Oklahoma again. 
A lot of strong storms brewing up today and tomorrow. So for today, you see it has grown again. You have your enhanced section. You have chances for hail today. You have the 5% to 15% and you have significant severe. That black right here is indicative to large hail at least two inches in diameter. This is for today. Here's the cities and states at risk for the hail. The large hail is a white line on top. You also have winds for today. You have the 5% in a lot of areas. You have the 15%, you have the 30% where I'm seeing hurricane force, real strong winds. And you have the significant severe once again, which is a black line on top. That's at least 75 miles per hour wind gusts. So here's your season states at risk for the hurricane force winds on top and the damaging wind gusts for every other color below. And you have chances for tornadoes once again for today. You have a 2%. Here's your cities and states at risk. The National Weather Service, as it has scattered severe thunderstorms, are expected today through tonight across portions of the central and southern plains. Large to very large hail and severe damage and winds should be the primary risk, with the greatest potential for significant 75 miles per hour plus winds across parts of the Oklahoma, Texas panhandles into western Oklahoma this afternoon and evening. So when you look at the latest update, this is why I waited today. I wanted a 12Z from HRRR so we need the best balloon data, the best information on these impacts. You see, as you go towards 5 and 6 p.m., it starts getting 40, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour wind gusts, all the way up to 80 and 90, according to HRRR, and it is coming all morning along into Oklahoma. Then as you go again for tomorrow, it's going to pop right back up again, bringing more severe weather and damage and winds. Now, so far, the latest update shows that it is going to bring anywhere from 60 all the way to 90. You always tone it down just a little bit. So I'll say anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per hour wind gusts coming with these cells for tonight. All the way across eastern New Mexico, some for southeastern Colorado, going into the Panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, and a cell or two for eastern Kansas. This is bringing 60 and 70 with these bands and possibly 80 and 90. Then you got overnight storms coming all the way for Oklahoma and tomorrow morning it's going to come back once again for Oklahoma going into Arkansas and maybe go a little further. A lot of damage and winds coming today and tomorrow. That's why I'm thinking an upload is warranted for tomorrow. It looks like it's going to be pretty severe, guys. Matter of fact, when I go to HRRR 15 minute increments, it does show you a little more detail and it's looking even more concerning. It's looking like as you go towards 6 and 6.30, you're going to get all the way up to possibly a hundred. So we can tone it down to 80 and even 90 is even possible now, at least with this data. As it keeps going all even along, look at that long track. It's showing a hundred with that long track, but we can say 80 and 90 with that long track. That is a lot of winds, definitely for the, for the panhandle of Texas. And as you go to 9 p.m. and on, it starts moving through Oklahoma. Anywhere from 60 to 70 plus miles per hour wind gusts. You see how it also comes from gone from Colorado, eastern New Mexico, Kansas, and northeastern Kansas. But as you go into later tonight and early morning hours, you're going to start moving through Oklahoma. And that's as far as you can see on the 15-minute increments. This is very concerning. So I will update you first thing in the morning on this, guys. It's looking concerning because as this trough comes on down, it's putting a big slight risk right below it. Also for Sunday, it's putting a big slight risk on the southern and eastern side. So for tomorrow, so far, you have chances for hail, you have chances for winds, and you have chances for tornadoes. I will update this first thing in the morning. Also for Sunday, you have severe weather as well, 5% and a 15%, probably the same impacts. And it's still bringing a lot of flooding. I know a lot of y'all need some rainfall, so I hope you do get it, but it's still bringing a lot of flooding all the way until Monday. This is a model by National Weather Service, and it is picking up heavy rainfall for Oklahoma, going towards Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Western Tennessee, and for the Northeast. So you're going to get an additional one to two plus inches of rainfall for Southern Kansas, Panhandle of Texas, the Eastern side, Oklahoma, going into Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, Mississippi, one to two inches. Southern Mississippi may be an inch, so it looks kind of light for y'all. You might get a little bit heavier. It's going to be more northern. But as it goes towards Alabama and the Panhandle, Florida, western Tennessee, a big hot spot for a lot of chances for flooding. It's also bringing some heavy rainfall towards Florida. Y'all have some storms that's going to be popping up. So northwestern Florida, you have a chance for one inches plus. And as you go towards eastern and southeastern Florida, you have chances for one inches plus. And it is going across North Carolina, more rainfall Virginia and is going towards the northeast, bringing a lot of rainfall for y'all as well. All the way from Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, one plus inches, but eastern Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, northern Maine, 
even Long Island getting on it. All y'all getting a lot of heavy rainfall still to come from this system. But most of all, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I know it's Friday. Everybody's a lot busy. I just wanted to show you these things because there's a lot of things we need to prepare for. Not just the severe weather, which is pretty severe enough. This solar maximum coming into solar maximum 25 is going to bring some prolonged effects. We're talking about a lot of heat, a lot of flooding, a lot of this, a, just a lot of everything. When these poles shift, it's a pretty significant event, guys. So please prepare for those any way you can. Now, we'll keep you updated as the information comes out from their forecast. I don't want to just assume anything. I want to bring just the facts. Please, I don't like to bring hype. I just want to bring as much facts so people can prepare as much as possible. And for this Friday, I want to read to you Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Thank you all for your time. And remember, all glory always goes to God our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always blesses you. He always keeps you and your family safe now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody.